Hi everyone, welcome back. It is Mixed Media Friday. I'm really excited. Just gonna get set up here. There we go. I'm just gonna load our comments in our, vi in our video. There we go. And I probably need to come this way just a little bit. Hopefully that makes a difference. All right, I'm gonna give everyone a second to come in. Sorry I'm running late, guys. Um, there we go, my volume's off. My phone's set up. Okay, so tonight I have with me some paper and I have deli sheets. And I'm gonna show this in a second. I'm gonna open up my gel press gel plate. Here we go. I always put it back into the original container. Whoop. Just so it stays good. So here we go. And, and then it stays between the two pieces of acetate. So I find this keeps it clean and it keeps it, um, it keeps it good. And then what I like to do too is take my packaging. Whoop. Take my packaging and put it all aside. So just one at a time, peel off the acetate. Here we go. And I keep that all together so I don't lose anything. I'll put that to the side. And then I'm going to move my jelly plate right here so you guys can see what I'm doing. And my plate is um, 8 by 10 There we go. I want to make sure that you guys are completely in focus. Let me move that down just a smear. That's probably better. Perfect. Okay, we'll get right into it. So basically tonight I have with me some just regular 30-ish um, yeah, pound um, copy paper. I use hammer mill. In my um, in my printer so it's very vibrant and the other thing I have with me um, I purchased these from Amazon and it's quite large it is um, a pack of 500 sheets and these are called um, deli papers so essentially they are dry waxed paper and they come in 500 sheets so this is pretty amazing because I like the size it's not like this great big huge roll where I have to fuss with it. Um, it is like a see-through thin um, deli paper. And um, they make amazing jelly. Um, I'll show you. They make amazing jelly prints. And also um, you can use them for decoupaging and like kind of like my, my method for um, the do-it-yourself um collage paper sort of thing and you can use them for collaging and all sorts of different things so we're going to do some of these tonight oh, of course i stuck that down to here and then we're going to use some paper the other thing i have with me so you guys can kind of see the tools i'm using i have brayers i have them in three different sizes i find the small one to be too small because it's only about this big this tiny little thing this is the biggest one and i don't know what i've done with the middle sized one and the middle sized one is probably about this and that one is usually my go-to so I can't seem to find that one so that's okay I've done something with it in here so um, I'm just gonna use this one for tonight this is the bigger one out of the two and um, these are from Jelly Arts and they are um, like a flexible silicone scraper that you use on your jelly plate and as you can see they all have like a different texture um, built into them on each side so you can scrape your plate and you can do different things to um, achieve different um, textures and things so we can use these and the other thing that I want to show you um, before we get started um, I have Liquitex basics acrylic set here and this one here I got I want you guys to be able to see that. There we go. This one here is a 48 pack 
from Liquitex. And this is a great way, guys, if you don't want to commit to all the huge bottles like I didn't want to. I haven't really used uh, Liquitex acrylic paints. Um, and these are heavy body. So what I did was I went ahead and I bought some of the sample packs. So I want to unbox these so you guys can kind of see what you get in here. So I can be completely transparent with what you get. They're small. They are 0 0.74 full ounces. So they're exactly, I think that says 22 milliliters. Yeah, milliliters in here. So they're small. Like they're, the packaging is, I want to say one, two, three, almost four inches. So just over three inches. So bringing the containers down to probably um, just a little bit over, yeah, about three inches, I would say. So they come in a variety of colors, and this is a great way to sample all the different colors that they make. And then in the spring, when I'm running out of my containers, I can turn around and I can decide which colors I've used the most often and which ones I want to buy in the, the eight full ounce um, tubes. So for me, that's kind of handy, and this is a great way to play with them and to sample all the colors that they have. So I'm really excited for that. So tonight I want to go with the browns and the neutrals. And this also came with um, the metallics. So I have all the colors right to, um, this is called unbleached titanium. And then I have a gray, a black, a silver, a gold, the bronze, and the copper. So I'm really excited about that. So I think these are going to be the colors that I want to play with tonight, all these neutrals. Because we're going for like grungy backgrounds. Um, and I've got yellow oxide here, it's called. But anyways, we're just going to open up that one. So I'll keep the primaries and the pinks and the greens and the reds and that all in here. And I'll put these to the side. Here we go. And we're going to play with this set here. And I like the fact that it's stackable trays. And I can easily put them back into the into the trays and back into the box and my kids aren't going to get into them that's another factor i have in the room make sure that my kids don't get into the product okay here we go so we have naples yellow hue we have raw sienna we have red oxide which is like a rouge oxide okay we've got burnt sienna that's one of my favorite colors and raw sienna oh no uh, raw umber sorry raw umber that's another favorite and we have unbleached titanium so this is like an off-white and i have on here neutrals gray and we have ivory black and we have silver gold or ore, bronze, and we have copper. So that's exciting. So again, I'll move this one out of the way. So these are the colors I'm going to be um, starting out with tonight because we're going to be doing a, um, a variety of different things. And the point that I really want to make, and this is um, where I've been really struggling myself, let yourself make mistakes. Come in with with the idea in your head that we are literally just playing. So I'm not going to be so focused and worried about what my end result is going to look like. We're going to enjoy the journey and the process of this. So we just have to sometimes allow ourselves to have fun and whatever we get, we get. And if some are perfect and they're usable for collaging and things, great. And, you know, backgrounds for, for like, our, our base for mixed media, great. And if they're not, that's okay. We can die cut them, and we can uh, tear them up, and we can collage with them, and we can do other things. So I really want to stress that, guys. So when you're using, like, the jelly plate or when you're doing mixed media, don't always feel like you have to have this perfect um, background or the perfect, um, or the perfect piece every time because it's not, it's not always going to happen. So allow yourself to make that, like, you know, to make mistakes and just enjoy the whole process of it. Because it can, it, you know, you can stress yourself out. And I do too. I sometimes stress myself out over, you know, and not push my, my mixed media pieces um, 
to the furthest that I could push them because I feel like I don't want to wreck my background. So I just wanted to share that. So what I like to do is come in with my lighter colors. And I'm going to come in with raw sienna. Let's, and I have, um, again, mine's 8 by 10 So this is 10 and then 8 How I've laid it out so you guys can see. And I'm this is um, heavy body. So really, I don't need very much. I just need to come in with like a little bit. And I have some Naples yellow hue. I have raw sienna. Let's do some unbleached titanium over here. Here we go. It's like an off-white. And then we have some red orange. Let's pull that towards the bottom here. All right. So then I want to take my brayer. Oh, and the other thing I want to do, make sure, and I'm going to do a piece so that I know this is my kind of my test run. So I'm going to fold this in half like this. And this is the piece that we're going to build as we're creating our our mixed media piece. Here we go. And I'm going to bray off of here because I'm going to show you guys some different techniques as we go. So basically I want to come in and I want to give this a really good play. See, I don't see and I'm not really used to these paints yet. So I don't know if less is more, more is less. So I'm not really entirely sure. So we're just going to give it a go. We're going to mix up our, our colors here, just like I'm doing. Then I want to bray off onto my sheet. There we go. Then I'm going to come in with my paper, like so. And I'm going to give this a really good rub. Here we go. And we're going to pull it up. So this is how I'd start with a base. So I usually start with something that's like acrylic. And as I mentioned, guys, we're going to be using... I'm going to tilt this up for a quick second so you can get a boo of what I have here. There we go. I have all of my distress sprays right in front of me there. And my inks are all in the holders beside me. And... I watched, um, it's Seth Apter who's given me all this inspiration with the jelly plate because I was really intimidated by this initially in that um, a lot of people just use acrylic paints. You know, I wasn't really sure exactly what to do. So I tried mono printing. That went great. I have um, two videos after this one. I'm going to post the other two videos. I managed to get them out of um, Facebook before they deleted my videos. So I'm going to have those up on YouTube right after this one and the two different, um, the three different ways that you can mono print. So one of them is using magazines, one of them is doing um, a print on the parchment paper. You just have to let it dry um, probably for about an hour, maybe two onto your parchment and then you can do your image transfer. So I have all kinds of, I've got two full videos of doing image transfers with the jelly plate so that I'm going to have up. Uh, this weekend after this video on my YouTube channel. Here we go. And I probably didn't need to um, rub it as much as I did. But again, really happy with that. You guys can see the contrast. So now I've done something light and I want to come in and I want to add some stuff that's a little darker. And um, the idea with this, guys, this isn't finished. This is like the base. So now we can come in, we can add stenciling, we can add all kinds of things, and we start building our layers. So now I want to, and I like to do my lights first. So that's how I treat my acrylic paints and my watercolor and even this, the distress. I like to do all my lights first and then add in my darks. So now that I have this, I want to add some, some raw umber. But I want to, I have my Tim Holtz stencils right in front of me, guys. Let me just have a quick look here. Let's see what we have. I've got tiles. Let's do some tiles. That's a good base. 
And then I want, um, let me see here. I want one that I can do the stencil technique with. And I think the clocks will be good for that. So I have this one. And then I really like that one too. I'll add some of that and maybe some splatters. Okay, so I have my stencils picked out that I pretty much want to use. Here we go. I like having these handy at my desk. Um, there we go. And the wonderful thing about the jelly plate, when you're working with stencils, they stick right down. So you don't really have to worry too much about placement. As you guys can see, once they're down, they're down, they're not moving. So I could even, you know, come with a braider and do one of these, so I stick it right down. So I don't have to worry about it moving when I'm adding my product. Or my, um, or my, um, my product or my, um, my sprays or my paints or anything while I, while I have it down. So I want to do like a combination of things. Let's try some raw sienna, but I want to mix this with, um, burnt sienna because I don't want to go too dark yet my darkest is going to be on top when I come in with the raw umber and I'm going to show you guys some different stuff I just want to have a nice kind of dark and I think we should add a metallic in there too let's add in some bronze kind of right in the middle here so I get that like metallic kind of look I'll just kind of do one of these there we go and when I mix them together this is going to give me like a, here we go. And I'm going to show you guys a little technique here too. So if I feel like I don't want to have this go on, oh, and then I just do the same thing, guys. I come on my little piece of paper here, and I just, yep, do one of these and clean it off. So we're building that as we go. So if I feel like I don't want it dark on there, I can come in with something like another piece of paper, or let's try a deli sheet. And I'm just going to do like a quick, here we go. A quick print if you guys can see that and I'm gonna pull it off and then I can bring my same piece in and I want these towards probably the middle so I'm gonna come with my brayer and I'm going to come in and pick up what I have left on my stencil like this and I found out something really interesting, too. Seth Aptor said he does not clean his jelly plate. That's half of the fun. You let whatever you have accumulate onto your jelly plate, and then it's kind of like a surprise for later kind of thing. So if you get stuff on your plate, when you go to do your next print, you're going to get undertones of um, whatever was on your plate. So that was really interesting, too, to, to find out. So here we go. This is what we have so far. And I don't even mind that I have a little bit of where the where the stencil is. Because I'm not using big stencils. I'm using Tim, Tim Holtz Tig stencils. And that's perfectly fine. Then I want to come in. And I want to add... Um, okay, I've done it like that. And then... Here we go. Sorry, guys. See when I peeled that off, I have the stencil mark still on my I have it still on my um my jelly plate. And then I can go ahead and I can add um so let's and this is what we do too. So if I want to lighten it up, 
this is a great way and I'm going to pull this. So I just want to make sure I have enough. So I'm just going to kind of do it in a section like this across here. So don't feel like you have to cover the entire plate every time either, right? So I'm essentially going to rub this over. Here we go. Over top of that spot that I want to pick up. So this is going to cause it to have some light. And then again, I can come into that little piece of paper I have here and just add some add some white down. And sometimes too, guys, your little piece of where you've put stuff down ends up to be amazing by the time you've layered it all up and you're done. And then I want to come in and maybe add this to the top. And I'm just looking to add approximately this right here. And then I can come in with the, here we go, with the brayer. And I can pick that up. So if you guys can see that, I've now added this portion of it to the top. And I'm going to leave this on here for the next thing that I do. And this is where it's going to get fun. Because now, um, Seth showed it with his eyes ink sprays. But I don't have eyes ink sprays yet. I have actually two coming. I have ordered his coffee and his one of his purples. I can't remember what it's called. So I should have that soon. So when I do, I'm going to demo it and compare it. But I have um, a lot of the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide sprays. So this is where it's going to get like super fun, guys. So I can add splotches and all kinds of colors down like this. And I'm just kind of bullseyeing it right now. I want to add some picket fence. This is spray stain. There we go. I've got some picket fence. And I'm going to add some... What else do I have here? Vintage photo, picket fence. I'm looking for neutrals. Oh, and I've got... Um, antique linen, fossilized amber, space marmalade, way in the back, antique linen. There we go. I hope I'm completely in focus. Sorry, guys. Yeah. That's better. You guys can see what I'm doing. And then I want to add some here, too. Maybe towards the top. There we go. And I can leave it like that, or I can come in with my brayer. And I can do one of these. And mix everything together. And move it around. So I'm going to do that for a base. So I have it kind of splotching here and there. But then what I can do is come in with my stencil here. And I want like something that's going to look kind of like, yeah, like that. Here we go. And I'm not worried about covering the entire stencil. I'm just looking to cover like the stenciled area. So like right in here and right in here. And I can even come in and spray that some more. So I have a nice mix of that color. And I have it on here. There we go. And I am completely covering this. And I can spray the stencil or I can completely spray the whole thing. Oh, and then I'm going to wipe this off like this and like that on here. And I'm going to come in like this and probably closer to this area here like that. And again, take my brayer, go over the whole thing like this. There we go. So then I'm left with something like this. Now, this is where it becomes really interesting. So I'm going to grab the jelly plate and just set it aside for a second so you guys can see this. Because now what I'm going to want to do 
is take another piece of paper. Here we go. And I'm going to want to make a, like a, a print. Here we go. Because it's very wet, the Distress Ink and Oxide is going to come off wet. So now I'm pretty much dry, but I have this other um, print here. So this is great. This is like the start of another background. And do you guys, see, I want you guys to really see this. Do you see the colors and all the little textures and all the, um, all the, just the, the different elements that this has for the background? It is just amazing and it's super grungy. So I'm really loving these techniques for that where you can come in and you can use your stencils different ways and by combining your acrylic paints with your with your sprays. So it's just a really fun way to get the most out of all of your products. And I ne it never even occurred to me to use them all together until, until I saw some of Seth's videos. And that's exactly what he does. So of course I had to try it. So I thought, what a better way to just come live and play and give you guys some inspiration. So this is all still really wet. And I can do the same thing. And now I'm going to pull my stencil. Because as you guys can see, I have all kinds of, um, I have all kinds more ink that's all on here. So I'm going to take this one here that's now blank. Or you know what? I could probably come back in and do some over here. I put this like right here and get this portion here. That's a good idea. And we'll grab it through here to kind of finish up that piece over here. There we go. So if you guys can see, that's more texture up in the corner. I'll put that aside for now because it's a little damp. And then I'm going to come in with this one here. And I'm going to come right down on top over here. And I'm going to pick the whole thing up. And then this is where I want to um, get dark with it. Start coming in with some darker colors. So now we've kind of created our background. But um, I still have ink all over my stencil. So now that I've done this, so see guys, it's really speckled here. And then I'm, this side here is pretty much dry, but this side here is wet. So this is like doing a print off of your actual stencil. So again, we're just going to put it down. And I want like a really good print off of this. Oh, I'm loving that. See how grungy that is? And then I could even take this one here, because it's a little wet, and come in and do that little mono print. Just like this. Okay. Perfect. Then I'm going to put this aside. So we have something that looks like this, and now we have something that looks like this. And now I can come in with another stencil and my darker colors. So that's just kind of like the beginning of, yeah, of what we're doing. It's just about creating layers and allowing yourself to just enjoy the process of it. Because, I mean, right now it's kind of like, well, you know, it looks, it looks um, interesting. But it wouldn't be anything close to a finished piece. So this is the whole point of not really worrying too much about what it looks like now. We're just going to embrace the process of how we get there. So now I want to come in with something darker. So I want to come in with raw umber. Here we go. Raw umber. Uh, maybe some copper. Not black. Yep, copper. Loving that color. And then this kind of area here. 
We'll come in with copper. Here we go. And then some, this one here is called bronze. Maybe something like that. Some bronze. So this is going to have like a real metallic look to it. So I'm coming in with the metallic cut colors. Here we go. There we are. Same thing. And I like that where we're coming in with multiple colors. So we're getting it all to kind of blend together. And if I feel like it's too copper or too um, much of one color, I can come in. And this is where I can add that little bit more to get it more dark. Here we go. Here and there. And then I can move it around. And less is more, guys. I'm just using a tiny bit of paint. And overall, I'm really loving the Liquitex paint. It goes on really well. It's a heavy body paint. And it was a really good bang for my buck. So I can't complain about that. Oh, and before I do that, I want to roll off onto here. So again, I'm just going to kind of do kind of like one of these where I'm creating some lines and some texture, kind of like that. And then I can go back and I can come on to this one here too, onto this sheet, and I can just rub off a little bit. It was a lot of fun watching Seth and learning his process of how he does grungy mixed media. See, I really enjoy watching Tim Holtz, but Tim Holtz is more vintage, whereas Seth Apter is more grunge. So this is more my cup of tea. So there, guys, I've added some more across here. I added some on here. I added this on here. And then I want this nice and dark. So I'm going to take my original piece over here, and I'm going to pull up some clogs. So I'm not going to do this in a way where it's the whole entire stencil. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to come in like... Right here, in this corner. Right here. Like that, and pull it up. So as you guys can see, I have a clock in the corner. And then I'm gonna come over here, like this. And I'm going to come in like that. I'm gonna put a clock in this corner. And this one here, I didn't do the print off of it because I wanted this one a little bit more bold on here. If you guys can see that. And I have it on there really grungy. It almost looks like a piece of textile. And that's what I really love about it. Then this one here can go in this corner here. So it kind of ties it in. There we go. And that's in that corner there. So again, I'll show you guys what we've got. I've got the clock in the top corner, I've got the clock in that corner, and the clock at the bottom. So that gives us some interest and some textile. All right, then what I want to do is I can come in and take a print. I can do that right here. So that's everything from the stencil. There we go. And then I'm going to get something a little lighter that goes on here. There we go. So I can sort of see the clocks, but it's no big deal. It's just super grungy. And then I'm going to pull this up. And then I have my clocks here. And I'm going to come down again with my unbleached titanium, which is my off-white. And I want a good amount because I want to pull this. Here we go. There we go. Here we go. And 
think I'm going to put this one right on here. Right in the center. Oh, uh, here. Here we go. Oh, and then I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to add some of the white here, and some of the white here, and through here, and here. So see, we just keep changing as we keep going with that one. So we can see the bits and pieces of the clock on there. And it's totally different from the bits and pieces that we have here. And um, now I can come in and I can add more dark, I can add more light, and you can come in with your stencils, you can come in and add splotches. This is the other fun thing too, you can kind of create your own little, little um, spills and splotches, just kind of by, you know, adding your paint down in different ways. And don't feel like you have to do um, one solid print of the whole entire jelly plate either, because we don't. We can kind of make, you know, like this, like a little splotch of, of something here. And then I can come in and I can add this, say, right here to my corner, like this. I forgot to rub off on here. See? Where I've kind of added some texture. And I want to add... So then, I now that I've got my browns, I want to come in and I want to add like a patina look. So, the other thing I wanted to show you is coming in with reinkers. So if I want absolute brilliant, like, color splotches, I can come in and I can add little splotches like this of reinker. So these are not actual spray marks, they are splatters. So if you guys can see that, now I have little splatters, and I could probably do, yeah, there we go. Where I have splatters and then because these are concentrated um, like concentrated pigment they're gonna run and it's gonna be wet so this is gonna give me a whole other look so I'm just gonna literally put that down and I'm gonna come in like this and you can use any of your sprays if you've Lindy's stamp gang if you have um, there's so many different brands of them. There's ones with little angels on the containers. I'm not sure who makes those. Prima has their own products. You can use Liquitex paint. You can use, um, F Pebo or Febo. See guys, there we go. I have now egg splatters on here from Speckled Egg. How fun is that? And then I still have more on here. And then I can just, you know, bring in that little test sheet that I had. Pick up some splatters. It's a great way of adding some, some contrast. And I have something really fun to show you, too. I just have to get up and grab some of my stamps. So again, that's just from my reinker. So I've gotten this from those same little splatters. I've gotten this. And we're going to add some to our main sheet over here. Uh, the only thing you're going to find is that the deli paper is not going to stick too well to, um, like, oxides and inks are not going to stick too well to your deli paper. The only thing that's going to stick there is your acrylic paint. So that's the only thing. But if you're working with cardstock or you're working with fabric or you're working with paper, absolutely, you can use your Distress products. Here we go. There, now I've got some of the blue here. And then the other thing I wanted to try, so now we've done oxides, and I want to come in with my new, 
I have crooked broomstick here. Um, that's like a gold. Let's do green. Something completely contrasting. All right. So I have Distress Mica Stain in Bubbling Cauldron. And the green. Let's add some green. So if I come in here and I just add a little bit like this, we can take our, our little tool and we can kind of streak it along and make, there we go, see guys, and we can make like little designs in here, just like that. And then I want to add this somewhere to approximately right here across there and then I just come in here like that so essentially guys we're just building layers that is neat now I've got some of my um, bubbling cauldron in there I love that the green over the clock like doesn't that just make that piece amazing I'm loving all this texture and And this vintage grunge, it is great. And I can use these pages, guys, in a variety of different ways. I can make tags out of this. I can use them in a journal. I can collage with them. There's so many things that we can do. Here we go. There we go. And again, I have some more gray. So it's just a great way to kind of pull it all in and the other thing I want to show you I just have to grab some stamps because this is super fun and this is like game changing for me and I'm not sure if you guys have seen this or not so I've, I have to share <laughs> um, let me get some good ones here I have some yeah my script and my vintage grunge where are they they are, yeah, they're splatters, and the orange ones are, right here. So the three that I chose are Slight Alterations, CMS 60, this one here, this is one of my favorite grungy sets, that one, and then I have this one here, CMS 28, Spills and Splatters, this is Embrace and Perfection, and of course my Ledger Script, CMS 241. So these are a couple of my favorites. There we go. And this is game changing, guys. So I'm going to grab my Ranger Archival. And I have it in this here, which is a... Um, the four color mixed media palette. So this is all Ranger Archival. It's just four different colors. It is in the Distress Colors, Hickory Smoke Vintage Photo, Ground Espresso, and Black Soot. So I'm just going to come in with regular black soot. I'm going to stamp this right on my jelly press. What? Fifi, you're stamping your jelly press in Ranger Archival ink. Watch. This is so exciting, guys. Watch what happens. Then we take our gel press. And we do one of these. And it comes right off your gel press onto your, onto, um, 
onto your, your piece. How amazing is that? And that's Ranger Archival, guys, and not, it's not left at all on my jelly plate. When I seen that, I was like, what? That's just, to me, that's just incredible. So we're able to do so much, and this reverses your stamps. If you guys can see this, it is now the opposite direction because it's stamped basically when you stamp it down, it's going to flip it. Um, I'd have to show you like something like a bird or um, um, something that's that's a little bigger for you to really notice that. But yeah, it's just amazing. So that's adding some script. Then I have this one here, which is slight alterations. And these are just amazing. This is for adding like all kinds of texture and different things. I'm going to move that. And then I'm going to come in with um, vintage photo. Yeah, this one here, vintage photo. So here we go. I just completely oh, I need to stamp that a little better. Here we go. And again, I'm using Ranger Archival. I've got the mixed media block in the four archival colors. And I'm just stamping one of my mixed media stamps. This is from Slight Alterations. And I'm going to come right into the jelly plate right here. Just a little bit of pressure. Again, right on the jelly plate in Ranger Archival ink. And then I'm going to put this in this corner here. And I'm going to come in like this and I'm going to pick it up. So I'm just essentially creating my background completely from scratch. I think that might need to be re -inked. So now I can kind of add this in anywhere where I kind of feel like I need a little something. So let's try ground espresso. It's a little darker. And I want it a little darker in that corner. So like right along here. Here we go. Yeah, that's better. Maybe. There we go. There, that'll be a little better. Right here. And I'm stamping right on the on the jelly plate. And I'm putting it down. There we go. That's better. Now you guys can see. I've got some grunge and I've got my script stamping. And I'm thinking some more script stamping at the front. Like on top over here. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add it in black. Right here, right at the top. Just like that. And... I'm going to have it going this way, right like this. There we go. And you can add anything you want, guys. You can add the sprays, you can add your paint, you can add um, anything that's a water-based paint. Um, I've actually seen people add um, their alcohol inks to the gel press but I don't have um, alcohol inks so I won't be doing that again I just have a difficult time with my kids so for me it's like anything like that that's alcohol based that's super dangerous it's just not a good idea not until my kids are a little older
There. And that's over here, some script stamping in the corner, and that's all in black. So, again, guys, it's how I would literally build my background from the ground up. So I'm really excited that I've gotten to give this a really good go. Because, again, when I, and then, again, I can take my script, my script stamp, and I can just come in here and add like that. But I think it's more fun doing it on the jelly on the on the gel press. And same with here. So again, that's how I would create a background from from the ground up. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. And this is using my new Liquitex Basics Acrylics Distress Oxide Sprays. And I used um, Distress Mica Stain, but I just did that in the in the the green here it is um bubbling cauldron and then i also used um speckled egg distress oxide reinker so i wanted to show that and that's how i got the blues blue in here it's for some like a patina look and i've used a variety of different stamps and stencils to build up my layers and we started, and I showed you guys how to mix your, mix your colors. So basically, you're just going to dab it and start um, with your lightest colors, and then you start getting darker as you go. So I'm, love, I'm loving this, because this is about six layers, guys. So it's just a matter of pushing yourself to do multiple layers, and not just, you know, ink up your background, stamp it, and say, okay, there's my background. We're able to actually push this, you know, to the point where we have you know, eight or nine layers or 10 layers or even 11 layers until we're really happy with it and we have all this contrast. So I just wanted to share this because that's what was holding me back, guys. Not pushing myself and not allowing the next thing to kind of come along for the next um, layer. And this one here, so again, not finished. We've got we got the start of it. I did some of my, um, same with this one. I did a lot of my, um, like my rub offs like this onto here and to here. So these are both the start of something great also. And again, we can just do all kinds of random things and I can keep building these. So, you know, these are not something I'm going to put aside. These are something that we can keep pulling in as we create. So I'm really happy with this one. But these are kind of like, you know, the start of something else. And then as we build the next thing, we can add to those. And I just keep them handy until we have like a masterpiece kind of like this. So it's not about getting there immediately. It's just about embracing the journey. So, again, it's really fun. And I just wanted to share all this. Because I know, for me, this has taken the frustration out of it completely. You know, not really knowing what products to start with. See, I've got some, some stain on here. So I can just literally come in and I can just drag it across. There we go. Add a little something. Add some more mica stain. Oh, I like that the, with the splatters of the green. So we just embrace the process and um, we create one layer at a time. I'm going to check my time. Okay, I've got 11.36. If anyone has any questions, drop them in the comments and I will answer them. Um, I don't see any comments. I just see that everyone's watching. And I wanted to share. I'm super excited. I picked up the last pack of crayons that I needed in the uh, the pigments. So I have this now in uh, Kitsch Flamingo, Salvaged Patina, and in Prize Ribbon. So I'm really excited to add these to my Distress Crayon collection. Those came in today. And that's all my sharing I have. And I'm going to come live at some point over the weekend to open my happy mail. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you back um, on Wednesday for our next tutorial. Thanks, everyone. Bye.